Sometimes in toxic relationships, you end up parenting your partner, especially when you're dealing with a narcissist or a toxic person. And if you're new here, my name is Lee Hammock. I'm a diagnosed narcissist, and I point out toxic, toxic people's traits and behaviors. In today's episode of A Narcissist Explains, we're talking about just that. Emotionally immature, toxic, narcissistic people. Stay tuned, like, and subscribe for more. So this comment right here just goes to show you the emotional immaturity that you face with most narcissistic people. Because when I'm talking to people on Zoom and things like that, if I close my eyes and listen to them describe how they take care of that narcissistic person in their lives, they toxic person, it sounds like they're taking care of like a child. I do everything for them. Like I cook for them. I clean for them. I help them get a good job. I got them on in my, in my work. I do menial tasks for them that they can do themselves, but they choose not to do them. It sounds like you have taken on an additional child, like a new son or a new daughter or things like that. And that's because, like I said earlier, a lot of narcissistic people stop growing emotionally at a very, very young age. So not only do you play the role of significant other, you play the role of parent to them as well. And a lot of narcissists resent their parents. So if a narcissist has mommy or daddy issues, they're going to take it out on you because you have taken on the role of caretaker in that person's life. You might have other kids to take care of, but you don't need a grown baby. Stay strong. Hope this helps. So if you couldn't read the text on the screen, it says, I said to him, it feels like in your, it feels like I'm your mother. I felt, I, I felt I was walking on eggshells. He blocked me on everything apart from messenger. I don't get it. So you see the dynamic right there, y'all. A lot of times in these relationships, when I'm doing my one-on-ones over Zoom, I do, I still do them over Zoom, y'all. The link is, like I said, you can go to mentalhealness.net to check that out, um, or the link is in the description for the one-on-ones over Zoom and whatnot. But a lot of times I'm talking to people over Zoom, I tell them, if I closed my eyes and heard you describe your relationship with your partner, and if you remove the, of course, you remove the, 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 the intimacy, the, the, the bedroom intimacy, it sounds like you're talking about a child. It sounds like you are parent. It sounds like you are talking about parenting a young child. It doesn't sound like you're dealing with an adult, because a lot of narcissistic people get emotionally stuck at a young age. They get emotionally stuck at between what eight and twelve years old, something like that, from what I've, what I've read and what I've heard from a lot of people. Their emotional age of a narcissistic person is between eight and twelve. A lot of times, not all narcissists are the same, of course, but the emotional age is between eight and twelve. So yeah, they can grow up physically. Like a narcissist can grow up physically. They can become smart. You can have an emotionally immature rocket scientist. You can have an emotionally immature biologist or the marine or whoever. Like I said, it doesn't even matter the career field or the, the actual book smarts or the actual, the actual intelligence. You see what I'm saying? It, but like I said, the, they can be emotionally immature where they, they experienced some type of trauma or some type they had to grow up too fast. So they skipped stages of emotional development, you know, and that's, that's called arrested development. My therapist told me about that right there. It's like, well, you, a lot of times you have to grow up too fast. Like a lot of times this happens with, you know, the older, the oldest sibling when the parents are ab abusive and the oldest sibling ends up, instead of being a, just an older sibling, they end up taking on a parent role sometimes. You see what I'm saying? I think that's kind of what happened in my dynamic a little bit. I, you know, I'm the oldest brother you know, I have a twin brother. I have, a, uh, um, you know, the oldest brother, you end up like kind of taking care of your little brothers and sisters and things like that. You end up playing a role of a parent. So you grow up too fast. So you skip stages of emotional development where you don't really get a chance to be a, a kid. Sometimes you see what I'm saying? That's what happens in that dynamic. You know what I mean? It just, you, you get wrapped up in it. And that's literally what happens in that, in that really in that dynamic, in that space and whatnot. You know what I mean? So if you feel like you are parenting your partner, you are probably in a toxic relationship. It doesn't mean that you're dealing with a narcissist, but it probably means that you're in a toxic relationship dynamic. And no, people don't like, this is <laughs> this is what happens so many times, like especially on my platform, people are looking for hope that somebody will grow up emotionally when just on their own. Like, what can I do to help them grow up? You know, I'm tired of parenting my partner. I'm tired of doing this. I'm tired of doing this. You gonna be tired for the rest of your life because this is who they are. You know, unless they are in some intense psychotherapy where they're actually being honest in therapy, where they're actually putting the work in in therapy, unless they're doing that, this is who you're going to be dealing with for the rest of your life. I don't know if you want to you want to have a, you, you got two kids, six and seven years old, but then you have a 37 year old. You see what I'm saying? 
you have three kids. If you want to deal with this for the rest of your life, like I said, I don't judge anybody, but this is who they are. Unless they are in some type of psychotherapy or they're willing to go to therapy, therapy and work through their trauma, work through their childhood issues, work through their mommy issues, their daddy issues, whatever issues they have going on. If they're not willing to work through those issues, then yes, this is who you're going to be dealing with. Because you don't you don't emotionally grow up without help. This is my this is my thoughts. And my therapist kind of she leaned into that, she leaned into that as well. That you can't emotionally grow up without dealing with the past, without acknowledging that the past happened, without you know dealing with the trauma, the childhood trauma, without healing your childhood wounds, you can't grow up emotionally. So you yeah you, like I said earlier, you can grow up physically, you can get big and tall and strong, but you might not be emotionally there. Like I said, they argue like you can tell sometimes when you're arguing with an adult and they put their hands in their ears and they walk off or they stone they stonewall you or they give you the silent treatment or something like that. Childish responses. Like the silent treatment is a childish response, y'all. It's just pretty much like nan and the boo boo, I can't hear you, blah, 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 blah. That's pretty much what the silent treatment is. The silent treatment is blah 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 blah. I can't hear you, can't hear you. The adult version of that right there is the silent treatment. It's the childish response. Rage, narcissistic rage, toxic rage, whatever you want to call it, is also a childish response because they can't process their emotions correctly. The only thing they know how to do is yell and scream at you. You see what I'm saying? Yell and scream, do all this other stuff. It just it gets to that dynamic right there. You know what I mean? It, it really it really will. So it, it gets to that dynamic. It gets to that part right there where it, it, you know you're yelling and the screaming, boop. It's just like, you know, if I just tell people yelling, screaming, rage, not dealing with their pro not willing, not willing to take accountability, blaming you for everything. Those are childish responses. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people, a lot of narcissistic people get into do these childish responses because they want to avoid the shame. You know what I mean? They want to avoid the shame of being held accountable, the shame of getting in trouble, the shame of being wrong, the shame of you being right. They want to avoid that at all costs a lot of times. So they, they, you know, they'll blame you. If you're dealing, like I said, the, the only way you can grow up, this is my personal thoughts, y'all. The only way that you can grow up emotionally is if you, they have to put the work in, y'all. I don't, I, I'm not, eh. sidebar, don't look at me. Just like, well, Lee, you seem, you seem like you're doing so much better. Maybe my person, why do y'all keep comparing y'all person to me? I, 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 I get it, but like, I've been on a therapy, I've been on a personal development journey for 16, 17 years. I've been in therapy for almost six years. The person that you're dealing with, what ink, what sign, what sign or signs have they shown you that they actually have the ability to put that work in for the rest of their life? I will be in therapy for the rest of my life. This is not a one stop, one couple session type of type of thing. Commitment is a lifelong commitment to betterment and self personal development therapy. Are they willing to do that? Ask yourself, look at this person. You've been dealing with them for a long extended period of time. You got you got 10 years in this relationship. You know who the hell you're dealing with right now. What have you been telling yourself to make you think that this person has the ability to get better any way, shape, or form? What have they shown you to say, damn, you know what? They can get better. I know they can. What have they shown you? Don't look at my videos and be like, well, they sh I, I showed, I looked at your videos and I think, I no, what have they shown you? Believe your wife, why y'all worry about my wife? What have they shown you? Don't put it onto me. Don't put it onto my shoulders. Don't try to my wife. I want to hear your wife's point. What have they shown you? Because I've been like, if anything, in my relationship dynamic, I've been consistent with what I've said. I know narcissists lie and do all this other stuff, but why does your wife come back? Because I've been consistent. I, if I have a, a goal or a dream, I tell her about it and I hit that goal or dream. I say, I'm going to do this. I hit it. No matter how fantastical it is, I hit that goal or that dream. You see what I'm saying? I hit it. I, hit, I, knock, I, I mark it. I knock it out. So when I tell her I'm going to do something big like that, she believes it. So I've had years of doing that. I had five, six, seven years of hitting these goals and marks that I've told her about, these dreams that I shared. She sees that. She sees when I put my mind to her, I accomplish that. That's what she told me myself. So I was like, hey, I'm going to therapy. I'll be in therapy for the rest of my life if that's what it takes for me to work on myself, for me to be a better person. Not for me to keep you here. I'm not trying to keep you here. I want to work on myself. It's not about you. If you leave, I'm still going to go to therapy. I'm still going to work on me. And I've been in therapy for this long. The consistency, the commitment. You see what I'm talking about? You see the dynamic. You see how it goes. So I'm asking you, what has this person in your life shown you that they have the ability to make this kind of consistent commitment for lifelong therapy to work on themselves? 
to be better, to emotionally, to have the chance of emotionally growing up. Otherwise, you have to accept them where they are. I can never hold them accountable. They yell and scream, they give me the silent treatment, they don't talk, they refuse to communicate. That's what you're gonna be dealing with for the rest of your life. I have to say it just like that because that's who you're gonna be dealing with. That's what you're going to be dealing with for the rest of your life. That's just me telling you straight up. Don't look at my videos and get hope that the person in your life can do what I've been doing for the last 17 years working on myself, the last six years in intense psychotherapy. You see what I'm saying? Literally, what have, what have this person that you're dealing with, what have they shown you? To, to, I, I can grow up, watch me do this. Anybody can do something for a short period of time, y'all. Anybody can change for a short period of time, one month, one week, two months, three months. Anybody can do, anybody can do that. It's the consistency over an extended period of time that shows you that you have to make that long time commitment, y'all. So again, what are they showing you? What have they shown you? Otherwise, you're gonna be dealing with this emotionally immature person for the rest of your existence as long as you're together. Until they unless they unless they discard you. Because sometimes they'll get rid of you, which is hurtful. They'll get rid of you. You're you're the one forgiving and trying to work through issues, and then they'll break up with you. You've forgiven them for so much stuff. You've forgiven them. You've taken them back 10, 15 times, but then they they break up with you. And then you feel silly. You're like, no. What can you do? Anyways, y'all, I know I rambled on this video, but I, I got to get that passion. Somebody left a comment on my video. I told them I give them hope to stay in the top relationship. Don't do that. Don't put that on me. <laughs> I, and I tell you, open my mouth and tell you, people still don't listen to it. But I digress. Like and subscribe for more. And as always, mental illness is out. Peace.